Hello everyone, I'm Hugo, a member of the AEC Digital Transformation Team at Pentagon Solutions. And in this short video, I'm going to talk about the use of view templates and filters in Revit. Setting up view templates is extremely simple and will speed up your design process massively. You simply need to customize a view in the way you like, showing and hiding the correct elements, and then save the setup to be reused in other views in the same project or even in other projects. This saves you the hassle of repeating the customization every time you create a new view. Filters go hand in hand with view templates, in my opinion. With filters, we are able to override the graphics for specific elements or categories in a logical and structured way. Okay, so I've already set up this view with a few changes to the standard look Revit provides us with, but I want to change a few other things. For example, I want my shadows to be off, so I'm just changing that definition here, I'm changing the detail level to coarse as well. Uh, I don't want much detail on my floor plans, <clears throat> but I would like my grids to have like a Bordeaux-ish uh, kind of tone, uh, a bit funky. Um, to if you noticed, uh, to change the the segment color, we have to come to the type, and if we want to change the the bubble uh, color, we have to go to another setting. So that's not really the best way uh, to go about it and I'll show how to do it with filters in a second. So I'm just moving my floor plan to the right side of my screen because that just means that whenever I'm playing with the settings in my visibility and graphics, I can just go and apply it and see the changes take place um, at the right side of my screen and I can undo them uh, if I wish quickly. Um, so in this case, I want to hide my case work and furniture elements as well, uh, because I just want it to be very, very simple. Um, generic models hide that as well. And finally, speciality equipment, I want to hide it. So apply and that's it hidden. Okay. So now I want to change the way how my walls and structural columns uh, look. So here in my walls, in the patterns, I want to apply a solid fill and this green tone. Um, don't know why, but I like it. And just hit OK. OK here, apply. You can see that it applies to some sections, but the ones that I that are cut, um, it's not applying it. So I have to be come to my cut and patterns and do the same thing as I did on the projection and surface category. So solid fill and select that color once again and apply. So that's more in line with what I was hoping to get. And now I want to apply it to my structural columns because I have this circular one um, here. <clears throat> so again, just solid fill, green, and in the background, solid fill, green as well. Let me just apply, you now it's a cut, so I could have just done this cut here. But that just means that in other views, um, if they are not cut, they will be green as well. Um, so it just, we have to think a bit uh, in advance uh, about applying this view template to other views. Now, I just want my floors to stand up a little bit. 
um, from the rest of the geometry as well. So in here, in my floors, I want to apply a slight a diagonal pattern uh, with a bluish color and that's it. So that's my um, customization applied to my walls and floors. And now, as I said, um, in the filters, we can apply a, a color to the entire grid uh, quite easily. At the moment, we don't have any filters applied. We just have to go to edit new, create a new um, filter. If you use a lot uh, or if you're working in uh, work shared or collaboration uh, models, try to follow um, some kind of rule in the naming to make it uh, stand up and uh, just more logical for you. So for me, it's just Pentagon grids. And then we have to select the category or categories that it may apply to. In this case, I just want to apply it to grids and we could use this rules um, section. Uh, however, how this, this one will work is it will just apply to any grid that is in the view. So it doesn't have to be a grid with another uh, certain um, parameter or a uh, certain letter or whatever. So in here, I'm just going to say, okay, add, I want to select that one. <clears throat> and finally, we can um, just select if we want to use that filter or not. If we want the grids in this case to be visible, for example. So if I just apply this, it will just hide the grids. The system will look for grids, find it and just hide them. <clears throat> but in this one, we just want it to change the color. Um, so let's say this one here, I don't want to override the, the weight of the line, neither the pattern, just the color. So apply, that's it, visible. And um, in that color that I wanted to apply as well. <clears throat> so just one other thing um, before I okay on this, on these changes, these solar panels and these tanks, I want them, them to stand up uh, a little bit, stand out from the crowd. Um, so I want to create another filter. <clears throat> In this one, I just want to duplicate the, the one I, I created for my grids, uh, but I'll just rename it as um, tanks and solar panels. Okay. So I know because I selected the, uh, the elements prior to recording this, uh, that my solar panels are specified as electrical equipment and the, the tanks are just plumbing features. So I want to select those two categories. <clears throat> And in this case, I want to use just the family name and it shall contain the word tank or so instead of and, so we have to select which kind of condition we want to use. Um, in this case, it will be one or the other. Uh, in some cases, it can be an and 
um, combination. So in here, the family name will contain tank or it will contain solar or panel, for example. <clears throat> and let's just try this. So add that. Let me just play with visibility, apply. If it has hidden the the things is because it's picking up the correct things. So I just want them to have like a funky pattern. Uh, this OSP and in a dark blue color, for example, and apply that. Okay, so you can see it here. Uh, when I OK it, it and zoom in, it's more visible. And here it applies to those circles. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm happy with the way this floor plan looks and I want to save it as a view template. Um, I can do this in two ways. I can go to my project browser, select my view and uh, right click it and say create view template from view or I can come to my view um, tab in the ribbon uh, on the top of my screen, go to view templates and say create template from current view. So once we click it, uh, it just asks us to enter a new name for that template. So I'm just going to say pen and simple floor plans. Okay, so once we okay it on the name, it adds um, the view template to the list uh, of existing view templates. And it just asks us to just check uh, all the parameters and settings that we are capturing with the view template. So, and we, we, we can also choose if we want to include certain parameters or not. So that's, this is a, a very important column as well. So for example, if the view scale, uh, in this case, it's a view scale of one to, to 100 and it was captured, but if you wanted to apply this view template across several views and not mess the, the, the scale, you could, just untick that option and it wouldn't change the scale. <clears throat> it's up to you. So we can have a look at the, the display model, uh, detail level, for example, um, the overrides in, in the model. So you can see that the case work that we have hidden uh, is there, uh, furniture, the overrides that we applied to floors, and the overrides in structural columns and walls, for example, the filters, they are there. Uh, so everything is um, captured in a neaty and organized way. So once we say okay to that, then in our floor plan properties, we can just come here to view template and just select the view template and we can apply it to other views as well. So if I go to my level one living room floor plan, <clears throat> I can just select it and change the view template to use the one I just created. Okay. Um, and I can use a schedule that I've created previously to change this quickly. So let's change it to simple floor plans and this one as well. <clears throat> okay. And if I just window tile, you can see that 
I'm just applying that same view template across all the floor plans in my project in a very quick way. <clears throat> well, uh, this is it for today. I hope this has been useful for you and that you'll put view templates and filters to practice soon. To learn in more in depth, attend an official Autodesk training course with Pentagon Solutions. Thanks for watching. Click subscribe to be kept up to date with future videos. And you can also follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter.